Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the breakout room on Autism Responsible. I'm Cecil Sikam. I will be your moderator for this uh, session. And I have the distinct pleasure of introducing our first speaker, Professor Abelardo Apollo Ilagan David Jr., or otherwise fondly known as Teacher Archie obtained his Bachelor and Master of Occupational Therapy from the University of the Philippines, Manila, and the University of Queensland, Australia, respectively. He currently serves as, the, as an assistant professor at the Graduate School of the University of Santo Tomas, Manila. He is the founder of the Independent Living Learning Center, Manila, Cebu, and Davao, Academia Progressiva de Manila, the Reach Foundation Incorporated, and Project Teach, or organizations that promote the wellness, development, and inclusion of youth with disabilities in the Philippines. As co-founder of TheraFree, a national volunteer program, he coordinated the development and distribution of comprehensive OT, PT, and speech written home programs. Uh, Professor David developed the diversity and inclusion modules for preschool to late elementary students. Uh, this is uh, aptly called DIMPLES. And for his efforts in collaborative programs with private and government organizations, he has earned several national and international awards, including World Bank Competition for Innovative Ideas in 2008. He is an, a recipient of the 10 Outstanding Young Men of the Philippines in 2012, and uh, the United Nations Public Service Award in 2015. So uh, let's give a warm uh, applause for our... <laughs> Uh, speaker for, for our first speaker this afternoon, Teacher Archie. Take it away, Teacher Archie. Thank you, Ma'am Says, for that very kind introduction. Good afternoon to all of you. And uh, I can see Ma'am Mona Belus also being in the same session. Partners forever, really, Ma'am Mona. <laughs> so thank you. And congratulations to Northville. ASP, and I believe the NeuroDev uh, Department of PCMC also helped organize this uh, national conference on autism. I feel truly uh, grateful to be part of this uh, very important uh, event. Aligned with this year's theme, Empowering Families During Uncertain Times, I shall be sharing some practices that hopefully could help you facilitate learning amidst all the COVID restrictions that we are confronted with. But before I start, uh, I would like to share my screen first for a PowerPoint presentation that I prepared. Uh, is it already being shared? Or like, let me see. Um, do you see it now? All right. Yes, Teacher Archie. Yeah, yeah. good afternoon, yeah. Teacher Archie. Good afternoon. It's not you, Kuya Ratil. I, I don't see your face, but I know your voice. All right. So for this afternoon, I shall be, I shall be presenting a list of uh, pertinent pieces of legislation and state programs that disability advocates can invoke to accord persons with autism their rights, as explained earlier by Kuya Ranil Sorongon, Moreover, data on PWD slash PWA employment statistics, challenges, success predictors, and training programs will be presented. Right. Governments have rightfully enacted pieces of legislation to mandate equal opportunities for PWD. The USA's Individuals with Disabilities Act of 1990 stipulates independent living and economic self-sufficiency as the ultimate goals of special education. Clearly, the end must be in sight, even at the onset of early intervention. In the States, at 21 years old, students with disabilities exit the educational system 
ideally for work training and placement. In the Philippines, the Department of Education explains that students with disabilities in public schools should transition out by 25 years old. So we ask ourselves, how prepared are our children and students for this transition? How do we keep our students from being displaced when it's time for them to exit the school system? The Philippines Magna Carta for PWD calls for equal opportunities for education and employment of PWDs. It mandates every province to establish at least one vocational and technical school for PWD. Certainly, there are uh, currently there are four uh, nationwide. Fortunately, these are augmented by test the centers, although they acknowledge that they have limited institutional capabilities to accommodate individuals with developmental conditions such as autism and intellectual disorders. The class schedules of adults um, or adult students in the SPED um, public schools can actually be arranged for them to be allowed to enroll concurrently in test the programs. RA5447 is an excellent resource that disability advocates can invoke. An additional 1% of the assessed value of real property and a certain portion of Virginia type cigarette taxes should be earmarked for projects relevant to the education of children with special needs. I urge you to ask your LGU leaders and see how this fund is being utilized. DOLE, the DTI, and DOST have PWD employment programs that might be helpful. Whilst all the aforementioned initiatives are positive developments, there is still a lack of uh, services, and there's a lot of ground to cover. In the USA, only 26% of PWDs were gainfully employed in 2015. In a study conducted by Schleswig in 2005, only 10% of the employable Filipino PWD subjects were wage employed. The figure is expected to be lower if those with more significant disabilities are taken into account. A study by Mina revealed that PWDs in Manila and Batangas mostly engaged in massage, BPO, factory, and office work. It is noteworthy that the participants in the study mostly pres presented with sensory and orthopedic issues and not developmental disorders such as autism. In the absence of comprehensive local data, work placement studies in the USA that identified the common jobs of persons with severe disabilities and vocational interest surveys in Singapore were reviewed. These revealed that subjects with intellectual and developmental disorders such as autism were mostly interested in and were employed in vocational areas of production work, personal service, food service, and office support. This data appears to mirror our local placement experience. This slide shows the common challenges that deter adults with developmental conditions from being fully gainfully employed. Apart from health reasons, the rest such as stigma, deliberate sabotage of jobs due to a lack of poor or a lack of work-life balance, low family and employer expectations, and inappropriate school curricula reflect an inadequate preparation of the student and his or her social environment, which schools may have the capability of helping address. Alternatively, Austin and the Boston Autism Consortium, which includes scientific institutions such as the MIT, Harvard, and the Boston Children's Hospital identified predictors of successful employment of PWA, which can be classified into four general categories, namely student demographics, skills, resources, social support, and educational services received. Specifically, the study showed that older males are more likely to be employed. 
In the Philippines, these may also be the case due to the higher prevalence of males with ASD. And since families of students, female students may tend to have more reservations about sending their daughters out for work. Schools that offer students job training that help liaise with potential employers and whose curricula focus on developing skills in communication, self-care, self-regulation, social interaction, good classroom behaviors, self-advocacy, and that help families balance their expectations, achieve more favorable outcomes. As helping professionals, we should all be reminded that the central purpose of inclusive and special education is to prepare students with disabilities for further education, employment, and independent living. Factors that influence post-school outcomes must be considered in intervention design and delivery. Preparing our students and children with ASD for work can never be too early and must start not earlier or not later than 14 years old. This process is called transition education, which entails helping students with disabilities achieve the most productive life after school. All the learning and education acquired since childhood add to their arsenal of tools that equip them for life. Dr. Allen Goldberg of the Syracuse University proposed a timeline for transition education. The next few slides highlight some activities that may be relevant and applicable to our context. During the elementary years, we can start teaching our children social skills, discipline, responsibility, and independence through play, self-care, and household activities. At 11 to 13 years old, we can formally introduce key concepts about various occupations through books, movies, bringing our children to work, and even volunteer work. At 14 years old, which is around grade nine or junior high, Parents and the school must formally sit down to craft a transition education plan. This plan must reflect goals on helping the student learn vocational skills and practical life skills. It's also important to explore leisure interests for the student's health and well being. At senior high, the curriculum must include vocational training and must give students work experience. Fortunately, the DEPED's new K-12 curriculum involves work training. However, parents must discuss with schools what accommodations the students might need. At this stage, it is advisable to include post-high school providers in the child's education team. In the Philippines, the DEPED may allow for a ceiling age of 25 years old in the public school system. Hence, the family and education team must decide how long they intend to keep the student in school. As the student approaches the prospect of independent living and as parents age, families must also start exploring guardianship options, which entail discussing the child's finances and assets. Ideally, by the time the student exits school between 18 to 25 years old, legal guardianship should have already been established. Parents are advised to help students enroll in SSS, PhilHealth, PagIBIG, even initially as voluntary contributors. The team should decide which track to pursue after high school. Is it post-secondary education, employment, or independent living and leisure. Then, the team should take necessary steps to pursue their chosen track. In presenting the Independent Living Learning Center's programs, we hope that you will be able to appreciate how we have tried to align these with the aforementioned predictors, milestone tasks, and timelines. The ILLC was established in Mandaluyong in 2003. It has since opened a campus in Cebu City in 2005 
and Davao City in 2009. From four students, ILC has had the privilege of working with over 2,174 students. Autism and related disorders comprise majority of the clients seen at 67%. As proposed by Goldberg, ILLC's school-to-workplace transition process begins early in the child's education. Early intervention goals must contribute towards the long-term goal of getting the student employed. ILLC's modified basic education program caters to children 12 years old and below. Achievable academic topics are taught, moreover, Practical life skills training is embedded in roughly 40% of the child's individualized curriculum. Opportunities for ILLC students to learn alongside their neurotypically developing peers is possible through a mainstreaming program in partnership with ILLC's sister school, the Academia Progressiva de Manila. In the photo, you see kids proudly showing their pink pointer finger upon voting for their class officers. Andrew, a grade two student with autism, was voted class secretary for his good note-taking skills. His classmates were able to see past his limitations in social skills and appreciated him for his strengths. The focus of the student's education program shifts to a more practical life skills curriculum when they reach 13 years old through the Transition Education Program, or TEP, which aims to teach self-care, self-advocacy, communication, social, functional academics, leisure, and pre-vocational skills. Remember, these are among the skills identified by Austin, Welsh, and the Boston Autism Consortium as predictors of successful employment. TEP students may simultaneously enroll in the Job Readiness Program, or JRP, and more details of the JRP will be presented later. If a student is capable of managing higher academic demands, he or she may undergo a TEP academic track that is supplemented with academic subjects such as science, history, Filipino, etc., to continue attaining credentials for a high school SPED diploma. Angelo has an intellectual disability and is extremely challenged in subtraction. Despite this, he was enabled to buy his own groceries in a reputable store. He was taught that there is nothing to be ashamed, uh, to be, uh, ashamed of in asking the cashier if he still has changed before he leaves. Angelo drives. I remember asking him to move my car for one, uh, for, to the next slot for washing, which is one of the topics in our life skills class years ago. Yes, Angelo was able to move my car in one piece. Raf hat, has autism and he was taught to not to obsess and not to perseverate on a particular step so as to finish the entire task on time. John has cerebral palsy. He was advised to sit on a chair when fixing his beddings to ensure stability. His classmates were asked to bring their own blankets in school. Using their actual materials helped promote mastery of skills. An advantage of the current home-based learning setup is it could be easier to facilitate generalization of skills at home. Given the chronic nature of our students' disability, compensatory methods and adaptive technology are highly encouraged. ILLC was fortunate to have obtained a grant from the Atlantic Institute to develop digital instructional materials on life skills and pre-vocational skills training. These consist of 78 evidence-based PowerPoint presentations with supplemental links to sites and videos. ILLC is happy to have shared these materials for free to public school teachers in the Philippines. Those among you here who are interested may click the link seen on the screen 
to be able to request access to these free instructional materials. Alternatively, you may also email us at illcadmin at illcphilippines.com. The Functional Basic Education Program is a graded non-compulsory academic course that students can take to attain a high school special education diploma. ILLC's senior high school program aims to teach vocational skills related to cooking, food and beverage, office work, and handicrafts. The program culminates with a practicum as a precursor to open or self-employment. An option that will be offered to students is for them to manage their own ILLC card cart called the Treasure Shop that sells products made by ILLC students and other PWDs. In the Job Readiness Program, or JRP, the school's various departments and internal units, such as its library, office, canteen, diner, the preschool department, function as training spaces for students. Non-teaching staff assigned in these units were trained how to engage the students effectively. ILC also has invited some companies, such as Greenwich, to outsource work, such as packing hot sauce sachets to school. To offer opportunities for on-the-job training, ILLC has partnered with establishments such as restaurants, groceries, government offices, hotels, water refilling stations, and schools. Together with the Autism Society Philippines, under the leadership of the Ms. Mona Veluz and SM Save More, ILLC has helped pioneer an ASD training and employment program called AutSM at Work. Above are some of the other establishments who have accepted ILLC students for on-site training. Here are JRP students at work. They got modest monthly allowance for the work hours they render. The school diner caters to students, staff, parents, guests, and community clients. The tasty food and the students' impressive skills delight our customers all the time. Managers of establishments where students undergo OJT have reported that their staff are inspired by the students' honesty, punctuality, and obedience. Consequently, company staff were reported to have learned to be more patient and more clear and specific in communicating with others. A good person job fit is crucial in ensuring a successful work placement program. We assess client factors such as their interests, aptitudes, and skills as well as contextual factors such as family expectations, work demands, and rewards, and accessibility to ensure a good person job match. ILLC's work placement program is guided by Becker and Drake's evidence-based principles on individual placement and support model. In placing PWDs to work, service providers must aspire to help the students achieve competitive and permanent employment as much as possible. Every student, regardless of ability, can be eligible for work placement, provided that the student has a motivation to work. This is based on the assumption that companies are willing to hire, that are willing to hire them exist. In the Philippines, it can still be a challenge for educators and therapists to find suitable employers unlike in developed countries where the state's labor, adult vocational program, and social services mainly assume the function of finding jobs for graduates with disabilities. Becker and Drake advises against lengthy pre-employment training and counseling. To help achieve this, the aforementioned procedures can be focused on the client's direct areas of concern and priorities. Teachers, therapists, doctors, families, and the student him or herself must be actively involved in the process. Lastly, follow-up supports are very important even long after the initial work placement. Apart from asking the client directly what his or her vocational interests are, tools such as the MIDAS can be administered to help identify the student's various types of intelligence and learning style. 
RFVII2 is perfect to identify vocational interests of students who are non-readers and who are non-verbal. The BWAP2 assesses capabilities needed for employment. While the OASIS ultimately recommends what types of jobs best suit the students based on their interests and aptitudes, the TIES helps assess job-related social skills. There are various work settings that can be considered for work training students. These include volunteer work, sheltered, home-based, transitional, supported, casual, self-employment, and competitive or open employment. From our experience, majority of the students we have placed for work are in competitive and supported employment settings. Work placement is a collaborative, goal-directed process. First, we screen and evaluate the student, job and contextual factors to identify the student's work readiness and the suitability of work options available that are being considered. Then a meeting is called for the student and the family to help them choose the best option for them. The family and the student is introduced to the potential employer where terms and conditions are discussed. ILLC then sends a job coach who can assist in the interview process. Once an agreement is reached, ILLC conducts a work analysis. If possible, the student's job description is customized in a way that benefits both him or her and the company. A job coach then conducts sensitivity training to all company staff for them to know how to best work with the student. Simultaneously, ILLC conducts a job simulation training in school. The student will commence work once he or she and the work environment are adequately prepared. The job coach's presence is eventually faded as the supervisor takes a more active role in mentoring and motivating the student. ILLC continues to monitor the student to help sustain his or her employment. These are just some of the companies that have hired our graduates. Please be sure to support and patronize each and every one of them. Through the years, we have produced encoders, food checkers, kitchen hands, waiters, gasoline uh, boy attendants, um, laundry washers, artists, AutoCAD operators, church sacristans or servers, and even concert dancers. All of them have made themselves and their families proud. COVID-19 has affected us in a multitude of ways. Educational systems had to be reimagined to make them more accessible to CWDs, who, according to the UNESCO, are more vulnerable to educational displacement. In lieu of in-school instruction, schools can offer synchronous and asynchronous instruction. It is essential for teachers and therapists to conduct regular check-ins especially on the students who are learning asynchronously. The family's contexts have to be assessed before distance learning is implemented for the teachers and therapists to know what kind of support and accommodations to extend. This gives families more flexibility in terms of their schedules and available technology. As you can see in these photos, Cognizant that many Filipino children and youth with special needs come from poor families, I established the REACH Foundation in 2005. The REACH Foundation is a non-stop, non-profit organization that aims to foster social inclusion and empowerment of PWDs from poor families through community-based rehabilitation programs. We reach out to the poorest communities living in depressed areas. How can poor families provide their child with much needed services such as therapy and special education when these cost more than what their whole family makes? Through CBR, the REACH Foundation empowers the PWD, the family, by making help, making help available to their community. The REACH Foundation heeds to this call for equity by establishing CBR programs such as project therapy, education, and assimilation of children with handicap, or TEACH, in 2007 in partnership with local government such as Mandaluyong. 
and Carmona Cavite. Stakeholders such as the government, the academe, civil society, families, PWD, and funding agencies come together and have sat down to develop an integrated service delivery framework. The following government and non-government agencies have come together to take part in the creation of Project Teach in Mandaluyong City. Our big thanks to all our partners. In developing Project Teach's service delivery framework, all stakeholders were asked to streamline their existing and new service says to promote efficiency. If the child receives a diagnosis, the family's sense of despair is somehow lifted since the doctors can immediately refer them to appropriate local partner stakeholders where the child can receive social, medical, therapy, educational, recreational, vocational training services as needed and for free. Local ordinances and resolutions were passed in Mandaluyong City to help Project Teach become a permanent and official program of the city. The REACH Foundation has helped lobby for such ordinances to help ascertain that the project's longevity stays beyond the term of sitting political heads. Focusing on transition education, Project Teach, in coordination with the City Division Schools of Mandaluyong City, has developed a clustering and transition program, which has effectively assigned students to more suitable programs, classes, and schools division-wide. Curricular standards were set to ensure quality of instruction is not just teacher dependent. A multidisciplinary team of doctors, therapists, psychologists, and teachers convene annually to discuss and deliberate on every child's educational path, giving students and their families a clearer vision of how they might progress from diagnosis, therapeutics, early intervention care, birth, basic and secondary education to work training and placement. Here are some photos of Project Teach in Action. Developmental pediatricians come monthly for diagnosis and referral to appropriate services. Project Teach employs a transdisciplinary team approach wherein staff allow the community volunteers and parents to handle the children during their sessions. With this, the parents learn therapy skills which they learn to carry out at home. Group tutorials are offered to help students who initially receive one-on-one -on -one therapy to transition to the daycare centers eventually. An ultimate goal is to mainstream CWDs in the regular classroom. 204 students have been mainstreamed in Mandaluyong's public schools since 2018. Vocational training programs offer opportunities for students to help augment their family's income. Kitchen Specials is a vocational training program that is fully staffed by PWD students and trainees, and they sell nutritious, affordable, and delicious snacks in public schools in Mandaluyong. Part of the income that this project generates is given to the st student trainees. Graduates of DepEd's Mandaluyong's vocational training programs on sewing, cooking, marketing, housekeeping, and carpentry are referred to the Manpower Technical Vocational Training Center, a TESDA uh, managed um, agency, for more advanced and specialized work skills training. Lastly, the Mandaluyong's um, Persons with Disabilities Office, headed by Ms. Wena Marquez, who I believe will be joining us later, takes charge of placing trained PWDs for work. For all the stakeholders' collaborative work, Project Teach is honored to have been awarded the World Bank's Panibagong Paraan for uh, Innovative Ideas, the DOH Top 3 Innovative Healthcare Programs, the Galing Puok Awards for Innovation and Excellence in Local Governance, Government Best Practice Recognition Award in 2019, and the United Nations Public Service Award. Thank you for listening to my presentation and for staying awake, I hope. So these are just some <laughs> of the references that I've used for this uh, material. And 
should you have more questions, please do not hesitate to contact me through this email address and uh, these phone numbers. Thank you. Thank you, Teacher Archie. And I think uh, through the chat room messages, we are getting a lot of positive uh, um, notes about the, the resources and the programs and the modules that you have, uh, you have shared with us. Uh, we'll be reserving your questions for later after our second um, <clears throat> lecturer has, uh, has finished her presentation. Um, teacher Archie has uh, shown us how they are trained, how our children or adults on the spectrum are trained. Uh, I have the honor of <laughs> introducing our mighty mama, uh, Miss Mona Magno de Luz, our current president of Autism Society Philippines. Uh, she has received degrees in business administration, applied economics, and strategic marketing from the University of the Philippines, Diliman, the University of Asia and the Pacific, and the London School of Business. Wow. Uh, today, she's going to give us a view of uh, what happens after the school and how uh, our adults are prepared further for their uh, employment. And she is going to draw uh, her presentation from experience as a corporate communications professional. Uh, she designed and engineered national advocacy initiatives like the widely successful ASP Autism Work Economic Empowerment Program, One Pangako, ASP Angel Corps, A AOK Philippines, among other successful campaigns, including our uh, National Autism Consciousness Week celebrations in the new normal. Uh, these are such gargantuan tasks that she, um, we would not be able to do it without her. <laughs> okay. She speaks publicly on disability advocacy, leadership, and genealogy, one of her hobbies. She was awarded the Bravo Empowerment Women Award in 2019 for social service and was among the finalists for the Shiro of the Year at the Asia CEO Awards in 2019. Mona is a wife and a mom to three kids, her eldest, Carl, is an adult on the spectrum who finished an architecture short course. He is active in the community, serving as an external vice president in the ASP self-advocate circle, and tends to his budding web enterprise, Gregarious Gifts, which I'm sure his mother <laughs> uh, helped him establish. And he's working at this pop-up food retail store called Promise Advo Cafe and volunteering with ASP. So um, it gives me much, much pleasure <laughs> to turn over the floor to her. Thank oh, Miss Mona. Uh, okay, so I'm, uh, I'm showing my presentation again. No, just, uh, I'm very thankful for the intro. Uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of facts there. I am the, the mom of Carl. Carl, who also happens to be a graduate of the ILLC. So maraming salamat, Teacher Archie, for all that you have done for my son. Uh, and I am also the Mama Sam of the ASP Autism Works Program. As uh, I was the executive uh, sponsor. We started everything. And uh, today, I am going to share our journey with all of you. All right. So a lot of us know ASP because of the, the very widely successful Angels Walk. Alam niyo na, Angels Walk, Angels Walk. Uh, you know, we, we got 24,000 people last year. And the recall really is about this advocacy. But what other things do we do? Teacher says it's actually head of our education uh, committee. And we are doing ASP home empowerment. We have a lot of uh, learning opportunities for parents. 
And uh, of late, we have been focusing on services directly for persons on the autism spectrum. And uh, when I when I came in, uh, this is really the gap that I saw when I came in as a leader. So when I when I started with ASP, po, uh, I came from a background, a corporate background. In fact, I understand corporate more than I do uh, educators or more than I do government. I understand what drives business. And when I came in, I felt that we were not looking enough at what the companies can do for us. Companies actually want to help, but they don't know how. So that is uh, one of the gaps that we saw uh, that we had to fill. No? Bago po ng ASP Autism Works, when uh, an adult on the spectrum would like to find a job, they would go through their school. If they go through ASP, they would... Uh, you know, we would ask somebody we know, kapkaibigan uh, ito, kaibigan, ninong, ninang. And after a person is employed, there is no follow through on what happens to their employment. So that was what, uh, what, what happened before. And this was the opportunity for us to develop a program based on what is important to us as families. I would like to issue the disclaimer, of course, that we are not, or the program is not about being a training program. We are not a school. We are uh, looking at being the conduit to, co to companies and corporations. We are able to partner with uh, organizations, institutions like ILLC, who generate job-ready graduates. And it is our job to then transition then or help with the transition towards uh, different types of economic activities. So the ASP Autism Works Program has been around since 2016. And uh, I just want to share some of the things that we, we encountered. I'll go into a lot of detail later about the, like where we were and, and who we partnered with. But what was important was there was a high level of management support. We didn't talk to HR. We talked to the president. It is important for us to have a level of support that will empower those who are in talent acquisition or recruitment. We are also community-based. So there was always a partnership, not just between the employee and the employer, but ASP was there. Transition specialists were there. The families were there. It is because we are working as a core team that we are able to anticipate and train and look at all possible options for the individual. Like, uh, like Sir Daniel said, though, it is very important to follow the voice of the person on the autism spectrum. Sila po ang magdidesisyon sa gusto nilang pagtrabaho, uh, itrabahuhin. Sometimes when we interview the parents and the, and the person on the spectrum, there is a disconnect. Mommy wants to do this route and the boy wants to do something else. Or, so those are things that we, uh, we have to contend with while there is this conversation and partnership. Importante po yung communication. Careful screening and sourcing of persons with autism. Uh, persons with autism go through a certain rigor. One, one of the things that a teach, uh, teacher Archie mentioned was um, a tool that, uh, uh, that measures readiness or interest, occupational interest assessment. So that's like the OASIS tool. We actually use that. We have interviews with parents and the person on the spectrum. We also apply a mental health, uh, mental health uh, uh, assessment tool only because we feel that a happy person will make a happy worker. If they have a lot of problems, a lot of issues at home, it is best to uh, put that in perspective, address those concerns before they go into the workplace. On the side of the workplace, we also do sensitivity trainings, continuous guidance of the supervisors as well as continuous training and counseling of the PWAs. So for, in, in, for, for uh, our partners, where we are a little bit uh, advanced, we go beyond sensitivity training uh, because we do have management scientists uh, within, our, within the ASP team. We actually conduct uh, conversations and training around um, performance management, around uh, personnel development. So they don't just look at recruitment and uh, uh, job onboarding, but they look at the career of that individual uh, moving forward. 
the, the support for the PWAs, even after they were hired, is very important because very likely they come, they would come to a point in their life where they need support. Uh, this is the, in our experience. This has been more mental health supports, and that is really where the, the community of ASP comes in, and um, not just the, from the parents, but also among those on the spectrum who are also in our community. All right. So we have been very oops. We have been very lucky that we've had a lot of very qualified, very intelligent partners. During our pilot, we worked with ILLC. And ILLC uh, made us understand that placement of a person on the spectrum or finding their, uh, their career is not a linear plan. It's not number one, number two, number three. It's not that kind of map. It is a circle. Because once you um, once you get somebody hired and they go through the life cycle of their employment, they come to a point in their time where they have to transition either to another job, either they were fired. Uh, many of them are actually going through that now. Um, if they want to do something else, they want to go back to school. So these are, these are areas that have to be considered when, they, when you plan. So, it is not, so sometimes you cannot just say, because you've already given someone a job or, ah, okay, he was placed already, it's fine for life. That's not true. They would need support again sometime in the future. And our program needed to be robust, needed to be uh, pragmatic, we have to be practical on how we can best make this sustainable. So uh, like my, my, my point, the, the overlying, um, I guess, thought, is walang iwanan. We cannot abandon them after they, you know, we, we throw them into the water. So they have to find support when, when they need it. So I'd like to talk about uh, the Autism Works program. And I know there are a lot of uh, uh, teachers, uh, high school teachers and transition uh, specialists in the room today. So I'd like you to understand where we are actually working. Uh, when we did our pilot in, in 2016, we were in NCR. And in, since then, we've actually grown to 10 other areas, which is Benguet, Cavite, Cebu, Davao, Iloilo, Laguna, Misamis Oriental, Quezon, and Rizal. And uh, before the pandemic, our roadmap or our pipeline was leading us to expansion in Batangas, Leyte, Pampanga, and South Cotabato. So the, our program was supported by the TELUS Foundation. Uh, so we were able to provide a transition specialists and job coaches to our, our, the people who, uh, who are employed. Uh, we were also assisted by PayPal, uh, PayPal Foundation. So they were able to help us scale our, our program. So since we began, we were able to fill 225 positions across 52 establishments in 11 provinces. It is uh, something that uh, we are very proud of and we are very happy in behalf of the families who support the program. All right. So I'd like to also talk about the companies who support uh, the the, the program, the ASP Autism Works Initiative. Some of them are, are in retail, some of them are in the knowledge industry, some of them are in service, and this is now an, uh, an expanding thought. You don't have to be a multinational corporation to look at inclusive employment. Uh, for one thing, it is uh, part of uh, the drive of the, the country to look at employment for all. So these, these are just a couple of examples of companies who have inclusive employment initiatives for autism, specifically for autism. And it is uh, no, it, it actually is interesting how, uh, how, how many people are actually looking at autism specifically. I think uh, there is a recognition um, uh, within the industry that 
there are skills that individuals with autism have which are better than neurotypical uh, workers. So these companies have invested in programs that harness those skills. So it's very interesting, for example, in, um, in SAP, which is a, um, a software development company, when they do uh, recruitment, in, they don't have interviews. They know that our kids will fail in interviews. We don't do well in interviews. So what they did is they have exercises, uh, problem-solving exercises that the applicants can do together with the team, the team who is going to assimilate that worker. And they usually present their solutions using Legos. So this is a very in innovative way of thinking. Uh, and it is friendlier. It's the kind of accommodation that our kids need. Uh, there is also a retail uh, company called H&M. There is H&M here, but it is a Swedish corporation. H&M uh, are actually in the Philippines. They've, they've, uh, we've already reached out. And before the pandemic, we were looking at hiring uh, persons on the spectrum for their stores. And what they want, the, I asked them, are you going to interview? No, it's going to be a practical thing. It's going to be um, uh, role playing. So they're, uh, they're, instead of an interview, the applicants are going to have role play with another person. So for example, uh, what will you do if you find somebody was stealing, uh, stealing um, clothes? So it, it's very interesting how uh, companies are looking at uh, being more practical, being more pragmatic as a way to uh, ensure that there is uh, the, that there is a chance or there is a fair chance for our kids to get hired. So looking at the business standpoint, I hope you, uh, I, I think it's very important to communicate that for us to be able to get jobs for our kids, we have to think like businesses. What are businesses looking for? And you can see the data before you from the United Nations. I think this is um, from the U.S. National Survey of Consumer Attitudes. And uh, what, what they're see, saying is inclusive employment affects your bottom line. So it is to your interest to be hiring in people with disabilities because the public will view you in a better light, right? So that's, uh, that's part of our pitch whenever we talk about uh, inclusive employment. We hope to have some sort of study uh, in the future also on this. Uh, and we also hope that my slide will progress sometime soon. There we go. So whenever the companies tell me, Uy, ano ba yan? Baka mamaya, special, special, special child, special child siya. We don't have the, the you, companies usually don't want to think of them uh, whenever they do their job. You know, this is a business. Do they need anything special? So, so when, they, when the company starts talking like this, our approach is always, don't think of this uh, as a business decision. Think of this as a human rights issue. When you treat everyone equally, everyone gets exactly the same thing. Those with disabilities will end up having less because it, they're, they're not level. So we, essentially, we are not, asking for equality. We are not asking for integration. We are asking for equity so that we are asking for inclusion. So in this concept, people who need more help will get more help. And those who don't need a lot of help will not. At, uh, with this philosophy, everybody will have a level playing field. So COVID, COVID, COVID. What is the impact of COVID? COVID to the job market. So the, the slide that I'm showing you today is actually the Philippines. Uh, it's data from the ADB. And it shows the people in full-time employment and those who are not working at the moment because of COVID. That's the one on the right. So these are still people with their jobs, but they are not working. So they are not productive at the moment. And much like the rest of the country, our kids were also affected by COVID. In fact, 
a lot of our kids uh, who are working in service industries ha- were, were furloughed. Furloughed means temporarily um, uh, put out of service. They are still hired. They, the company is still um, willing to keep them on, but they cannot work because there is no dine-in right now, etc. So uh, the, good, the good news is a lot of those who are working in offices are able to work from home. But again, this is a situation we are today. So what does the future look like for adults on the autism spectrum? The ASP has had to contend with uh, well, uh, you know, this new normal. And it, it, uh, we also look at the future of our adults. No? It was important for us first to establish a community connection not just from the parents to them, but among themselves. So we do have the ASP self-advocate circle. So this self-advocate circle is composed of um, persons with autism, adults with autism from all over the country. At the moment, they comprise about 10% of the membership base of ASP. So they are growing. Only last year, they were at 4%. So ganun na lang po yung nakikita namin that more and more kids are wanting to advocate for themselves. So it is this is an important uh, venue because one they can they can chat, they have a weekend um, you know hangouts. They have leaders. So Ian is their leader, Carl, Matt and Pia they're their leaders for the organization and uh, we are able to also get information from them. What is most important to you? So they did mention that bullying is important to them, work and uh, jobs are important to them, and mental health. Those are the top three issues that is important to the self-advocate circle. And from a program and the project standpoint, that was those were the areas that we wanted to um, concentrate on. The other thing that ASP has to now look into is really entrepreneurship. Hindi yung yung pakyut pakyut na entrepreneurship where you you do it now and then tomorrow hindi ka nagagawa. Uh, we actually are working with DTI and SM Cares on a sustainable program for training. Um, ASP has already been working on uh, what we call the ASP Autismal. In fact, we are on Shopee. And we have been selling uh, products for and by persons on the autism spectrum. Um, if you remember the video a couple of uh, a couple of hours ago, yung Amin Project Chocolate, uh, which we uh, we have with Leonard Cheshire Disability Philippines Foundation, uh, Project Chocolate on its first year on the first Christmas, we actually grossed. 300,000 pesos on sale of chocolates alone. So it is viable once, if ever, I mean, as long as you are professional and your products meet certain standards. So we are very hopeful that in 2021, DTI and SM Cares will help us be able to scale our program through training, mentorship, and uh, I am crossing my fingers in financial grants. So the other thing that we have been very lucky to have accomplished is the availability of freelance work. Uh, Early in the year, we were able to partner with a company called Divergent, which is based in New York. And they are, their business uh, model is focused around persons with autism. And we are their official partners for Southeast Asia. And our program hires data annotators for uh, Project Divergent. Project Divergent is working with technology innovators and companies who are looking at harnessing the power of artificial intelligence in their applications and in their product services. So example po, ano po ba ang ginagawa ng image annotator? So, for example, kung merong isang software company who is creating a traffic monitoring system, their system should be able to understand what a car looks like. So, what uh, our image annotators would do is actually 
look at an image or a video and put squares around what cars look like. Uh, there is also uh, another type of service that they do, which is called text annotation. So you can see below that, for example, in a, uh, in a particular sentence, identify all the persons, identify all of the countries, the cities, the albums, the songs, the things like that. So that will help them in text sentiment analysis. So it's a very, very uh, high tech. This is early input to a high tech process. And we are very lucky to have Divergent as a partner. Uh, we started uh, in, let me see, I think June. Uh, there is, a, we, we had a little uh, ramp up uh, to make sure that everyone was trained. So the first, the, the, our pilot have 11 uh, participants. So as of Christmas, uh, our payroll was, uh, was for 11 kids. And this year, we are very lucky that our, the demand is now up to 100 positions. So we are going to be working on this for most of 2021. So ayun po, uh, that is the Autism Works uh, project or program in a nutshell. Uh, if you need to call us, if you want more information, uh, you can you see my email or our email address below. So again, we are noting that we are not a school. We are not a training institution. When somebody sends us an application, it, it, we under, we assume that that person is job ready. So resumes lang po. If you are also looking at, um, if you have uh, friends who are in government or are in a private industry and would like to be an inclusive employer, you could also send us an, uh, an email. We are currently processing a lot of, uh, a lot of inquiries actually, thanks to the, the National Autism Consciousness Week buzz. Uh, there are a lot of multinational corporations also looking at hiring more kids. So, ayun po, maraming salamat. Ako po si Mona Magno Veluz, ang pambansang pangulo ng ASP at ang mamasang ng ASP Autism Works. Maraming salamat po. Maraming maraming salamat din, Mami Mona. And uh, the future looks bright for our kids with autism because of your efforts. So uh, at this point, we can already open the floor to uh, questions that you may have for teacher Archie and for Mami Mona. Um, we are monitoring your uh, reactions through our chat room. I actually have a question for Teacher Archie. <laughs> All right. Don't make it too tough. <laughs> Don't make it too tough. <laughs> Teacher Archie, how are the kids ninyo who are in employment? How are, how are they doing? Uh, well, thank you, Mommy, for, uh, no, for checking on them. Um... Many of our students are still gainfully employed. However, like uh, uh, many of our uh, workforce, uh, some have also been affected. Some, were, some have been put on furlough. Uh, also, we have some students who were actually um, terminated no, from work, unfortunately. Uh, but the parents and the students understand um, so in the meantime, we've just worked with them to try and help them uh, to stay as uh, productive as possible uh, during especially the, the uh, height of the lockdown. So um, apart from uh, being more involved in uh, home management, uh, we've also uh, helped uh, some of our students uh, explore self-employment. Uh, in fact, most recently, we had a program in uh, IELTS under our JRP uh, curriculum called the Orange Project, wherein we actually taught uh, some students the basic um, 
uh, skills needed for online selling. So very cute kasi for the pilot run of the Orange project, we had the students uh, sell carbonara. So we had almost 20 participating students. And you can just imagine uh, how many carbonara I ate that week. Pero iba iba naman, <laughs> iba iba naman silang versions of it. There, are, there were some uh, that had more bacon bits, others more cream. But what I noticed was when the parents and the students find out that it's me who's ordering and daming freebies, kaya sabi ko, cannot be. This is supposed to be a business, <laughs> mami mo na. So it has to be profitable for, for the students. But of course, I, I appreciate their, their uh, parang, uh, thoughtfulness no, in sending those freebies to me through the usual no, na mga delivery uh, companies natin. Uh, we actually have the same experience. Over ah. the last couple of months, some kids started doing, uh, making products oh, yeah. and selling items. No, so uh, one some someone would uh, sell their product, and then they would get their driver and then personally deliver it to to people. So para daw mas mura yung yung produkto. So uh, that's why we had to start uh, looking at. Uh, a formal uh, program to educate them on the business basics kasi marami silang mga hidden costs na hindi na-integrate into their pricing. So there was a lot of, I think there were, there were a lot of kids who were doing that. So that's why the, you know, the whole DPI project uh, kind of uh, happened uh, yeah. to help our kids who are, uh, well, they're not really losing money. It's their parents who are losing money. <laughs> Okay. But, the, but the students the students were just so uh, excited uh, being able to experience receiving uh, payment no, from GCash, for example, for the first time. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, also receiving orders online. You know? So I, I believe these um, skills that they've learned during this pandemic will stay relevant even beyond COVID-19. In fact, I diba, diba, mami? so this will only help their uh, business uh, have a uh, wider reach uh, even beyond their uh, no, yung maybe their neighborhood or their village. Yeah. And uh, also, my teacher Archie, for example, our kids who are in the Divergent program, uh, when they came in, they didn't have a bank account. So we told them, mm -hmm. you have to have a bank account. We have to have a place to deliver your salary. And because PayPal was our partner, we also asked them to open PayPal accounts that connect to their bank accounts. So mm -hmm. now all of our salaries are paid through PayPal. So it's, a, it's a, I think, a way for them also to get used to this new, uh, new standard in, uh, in transacting. Definitely. Hi, Teacher Archie. I'm getting a question here, Po, about uh, what do you recommend for high school uh, teachers who are training kids in transition programs. So, ano? Uh, in the presentation, uh, we underscored the importance of uh, transition planning very early on, like when the student is at least 14 years old. So if you are a student uh, or a teacher of, I think these are about grade 9 um, students, it's best to... Uh, organize that uh, parent-teacher conference uh, to discuss uh, your uh, vision and direction for the student uh, post high school. Uh, in the presentation, we explained that it would be good also to involve post-secondary education providers in the team already. So in the Philippines, that, that may include the TESDA. No? If there are schools that offer vocational programs, maganda to um, sit with them early on so that you can start preparing um, the students uh, to acquire whatever prerequisite skills are needed for them to be eligible for uh, post-secondary education uh, courses, assuming that that's a track that you'd like to pursue. Uh, but also, Diba, there are some students who uh, prefer to pursue work after high school. So in... Uh, the studies that I have uh, read, 
uh, one of the very strong indicators of successful employment is um, giving students in high school the opportunity to experience work within their high school curriculum. I know that can be a challenge, especially these days when the students are learning remotely. So I guess um, option, yung uh, activities like uh, Mamona and I have uh, shared a while ago, like online selling, but if not, uh, if that's not possible, work very closely with the parents of the student and uh, um, plan how the student might be able to engage in some form of work from the house or within their community. Uh, the parents have to be clearly oriented that uh, um, they have to treat the student worker as a worker you know, when he or she is uh, engaged in the recommended activities such that there should be expectations in terms of when the student should uh, perform the task. Um, and uh, also, if uh, there's a contract that says that the student uh, will receive something for the service rendered, for example, ibigay din yun uh, what's due to the student. Um, another recommendation for um, secondary teachers, I think very, very important then na uh, when we um, work with students, clear sa mga parents that there's an exit point no, from school. Hindi po yung tatanda na yung mga bata sa school uh, ay ang ideal na scenario. I know no, um, the public schools are being so accommodating such that uh, up until this point, there are still some students who are beyond 25 years old in the school system. But there will come a time na um, mako, mako congest na po yung uh, mga vocational and uh, pre-voc programs sa mga public school that we really have to uh, find more effective ways to transition the adult students out of school uh, uh, um, to the workplace. Um, most local governments have their own test the centers. So I would uh, recommend um, the DepEd uh, uh, divisions, um, perhaps spearheaded by the secondary teachers, to uh, foster a stronger relationship with your uh, city or your municipalities. Uh, test that. Um, so that uh, after, um, let's say, high school with you, uh, must equip yung uh, local test the ninyo to handle uh, the students. In the case of Mandaluyong City, um, they have a very active Persons with Disabilities Affairs office headed by Wena. So uh, the, P the PIDAO is also a uh, part no, of this big a community-based program called Project Teach. And uh, basically, the PIDAO is uh, responsible for finding uh, suitable employment for the successful graduates of vocational training programs offered by not just the DepEd, but the Manpower Office, which is um, Mandaluyong City's TESDA Center. So nakita po natin na uh, kahalagahan nung pag uh, si streamline ng mga serbisyo po natin. Although we are from the DepEd, hindi po yung sabihin na yung ating uh, uh, activities ay confined lang do sa department natin. Kailangan po tayo ay mag-reach out sa mga iba pang mga uh, gober uh, ahensya ng gobyerno at even uh, private sector para masimulan na po natin at mas mapalakas pa yung mga efforts natin sa pag-place ng mga estudyante natin for, for work. Uh, a very uh, promising option na pwede din natin i-consider ay self-employment. Kung nahihirapan po tayong maghanap ng mga uh, companies na makaka-absorb ng mga sudyante natin for whatever reason, tignan natin kung pwede natin i-educate din yung mga pamilya, uh, mga uh, caregivers uh, kasama ng ating mga Sudyante para sila mismo perhaps makapagsimula ng isang, hanap, uh, isang uh, kabuhayan no, na kung saan may involve yung bata. I have uh, posted some uh, resources uh, na programs ng DOLE, ng DOSD, no, at saka ng uh, uh, DTI 
na pwedeng i-take advantage ng mga families natin para makakuha ng uh, tulong, even na uh, kapital para sa mga naiisip nilang negosyo. And okay. to, to add, Teacher Archie, I actually have, uh, fr- from the side of business, no, my suggestion for those who would like to uh, have uh, uh, transition activities for their students in high school, um, I would suggest that you reach out to active businesses in your area. Mm-hmm. When you create a product or an uh, or something that you want to sell, don't create it in a void because mangyayari po, you try to sell them and people will buy them out of awa, which we don't want. Uh, they have to see the value in your items. Your products would have to be uh, at a certain standard so that they would genuinely be interested in buying it. I love the idea of Teacher Archie because what he did, yung project nila na they put a uh, napkin and a uh, hot sauce in plastic bags and then they that that is a project that they have with a pizza company so please go out to your mm-hmm. your communities and look for businesses who need the, the help kahit po yung mga maliliit na trabaho kahit nagfo-fold ng napkin or uh, or ang bayad is like basta wag po libre and y- yung pang yung isa na parang minsan we are so grateful that our kids are accommodated na ano na po uh, hindi po sila nababayaran so even if they have uh, if even if they have uh, disabilities even if they are students if they are adding value to the business please make sure that they are paid and they are paid well so ako po sa, sa ASP Autism Works our standard hindi po kami nag nag uh, allow ng sub uh, subpar payment so below minimum wage we do not allow that kasi po kung sino po sino pa po ba ang mag-advocate sa kanila kung hindi tayo wag din natin paramdam sa kanila na ang trabaho nila ay uh, that it's worth less than the work of somebody else in exactly the same position so yun po bigyan po natin ng ng uh, bigyan po natin ng value yung trabaho nila kailangan po mag-umpisa yan sa, sa skwela. Uh, at yung mga teacher po, nasa inyo po ang challenge dahil kailangan creative kayo. Uh, wag naman po tayo gagawa nung sa toilet paper, gagawa tayo ng iba-ibang project, tapos bebenta natin yon Yung po talaga, ano, ma- mahi- mahihirapan po yung mga bibili na ma-appreciate yung skill natin kung walang value sa kanila yung product. So dapat po, always look at value, always look at um, at adding to the community. Diba? Don't, don't make decisions in a void. Okay. Um, we have a question from Claire Corunia and she's asking if DepEd also considers the inclusion of OT services in their SPED program. Teacher Archie, would you like to address this? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the DepEd uh, does not have OT in its uh, plantilla yet. No? Uh, walang item for an OT in their plantilla. However, there are ways for the local government to be able to engage an occupational therapist, uh, such as, for example, uh, getting items from the city health office or the CSWD for, uh, let's say, a health uh, officer or a health uh, program manager. Um, just so um, the local government will be able to source uh, uh, funding that could competitively uh, compensate yung OT na gusto po ninyong i- i- hire. Now, in the case of Mandaluyong, for example, since not all um, public schools have the means to employ their own occupational therapist, physical therapist, and speech therapist, the city uh, basically hired a pool of therapists that are shared by the different public schools. So they basically hop from one public school to another uh, on demand and uh, for regular monitoring ng mga studyating nandun and for consultation uh, with uh, the SPED teachers. Uh, in fact, uh, we've had our OTs in a uh, project teaching in Mandaluyong also 
participate in the parent teacher conferences no doon sa mga public schools po natin um, so ang na uh, kaka encourage po na balita ay sa kasalukuyan mayroon pong batas na naka salang no on inclusive education at kung ito po ay maipapasa mayroon pong acknowledgement doon na importante rin ang mga support services katulad ng occupational therapy and hopefully that would translate to the local uh, governments and the DepEd uh, formally uh, creating uh, items do sa plantilya niya for OT para mas madaling mag-hire uh, kasi nagkaka Uh, uh, tuwa po na mayroong mga therapists na na nagkakaroon ng interest na mag-work sa government. Kaya lang, unfortunately, ang nagiging problema naman ay kahit gusto silang i-employ ng uh, mga public schools, for example, hirap silang i-justify yung uh, hiring na yon kung wala nga doon sa plantilya. Lalo na kung yung uti na yon ay hindi naman siya licensed teacher then at the same time. So dapat ano, um, hindi lang yung principal pero yung division chief or do we go as high as uh, Briones to put this on the table? Oh, sige po. Ma'am, kausapin niyo. I think it's also good to uh, remember that the PhilHealth actually created um, uh, plans or what do they call it? It's like um, the, the children with disability plans for PhilHealth members where Uh, some of the regional hubs are supposed to have occupational therapists, speech pathologists, and dev feds on staff. So yung po yung plano. And again, uh, I, we are hoping that the dev ed and the DOH can somehow uh, have a conversation to make sure that the local uh, public schools are also serviced beyond the, ano, beyond the field health members. And right. I think at a certain point, all PWD should be field health members already. May batas na po. So I think there's that, uh, there's that possibility to tap that resource once the uh, universal health care program is already implemented. Right. Incidentally, the Philippines is actually one of the signatories of the UNCRPD, which uh, says that uh, all uh, participating countries must Uh, institute community-based rehab programs in uh, their different uh, local governments. So if you are from a city or a municipality that doesn't have a CBR program yet, pwede po ninyong uh, invoke yung NC- UNCRPD sa inyong mga konsihal, sa inyong mga government leaders para po uh, sila ay magtayo uh, ng community-based rehab program kung saan normally meron pong Uh, OT, PT, at speech therapist na nandoon. So, if nandoon na po yung CBR programs, maaari pong itap yun ng mga public school teachers natin uh, na pwedeng pag-referan ng mga estudyante nila uh, for therapy kahit na sa ngayong panahon na ito ay hindi pa uh, officially employed halimbawa or engaged yung mga therapist na yun sa DepEd. Pero since government naman ang may handled ng CBR program na yon, pwede pong tumanggap sila ng mga referrals from the uh, public school teachers. In fact, siguro baka po tayo yung ma- ma- hindi lang aware na meron palang mga CBR programs na sa inyong mga uh, respective community. So take time to ask if may CBR program na sa inyong community, best um, person or office to ask is the Uh, Persons with Disabilities Affairs Office or your CSWD um, and uh, ask how uh, you might be able to refer your kids to them. If the therapists don't go there on a regular basis, like nandiyan sila araw-araw, and they come there only on certain occasions, you may at least initially request for a home program, which the families and the teachers can uh, implement um, and perhaps even integrate in the uh, their uh, classroom activities. And for that home program to be uh, upgraded and modified accordingly, the next time the student is seen by the consultant or the visiting therapist for re-evaluation. So pwede pong ganun na hindi kailangan weekly nando doon yung uh, bata sa clinic, lalo na kung hindi yun posible, kahit gusto pa natin, uh, sa magitan ng 
to home programs at pag empower ng mga parents. Kaya maganda nga po yung project empowerment ng uh, ASP kasi uh, through that uh, model, the parents actually get to make uh, their daily interactions with their children therapeutic, so to speak. Diba? So kung true. paano siya, so yeah, kung paano siya sasamahan na bang kumakain, maliligo, kung paano sila mag-uusap, paano nag-uusap na cheap, kung paano sila mag- uh, market na apply yung techniques ng speech therapist, ng occupational therapist, and uh, uh, yung therapy becomes round the clock, even better than paying for, uh, let's say, one hour per week therapist uh, initiated and facilitated session. Ha? Teacher Archie, we have, ano, ano, as, uh, as far as I know, Carmona has a CBR yeah. program. Are there any other uh, cities that you know of that has a a CBR program for autism. Ah, yeah. For Quezon City has a program also for uh, children with developmental conditions, including autism. Uh, we've uh, had the honor of sitting down with uh, Vice Mayor uh, Belmonte then, who's mayor now, you know, in helping uh, uh, frame their CBR program. And uh, currently, I believe uh, their uh, CBR program has partnered with uh, UST, which uh, sends interns naman to their center pre-COVID no, para uh, ma-augment yung manpower nila. Um, Project Teaching Mandaluyong has been visited by so many LGUs. So I would like to think that somehow nagkaroon naman po ng influence yung nakita nila dun sa kanilang CBR programs. If you are a local government head or leader uh, listening now and um, you feel that uh, perhaps project teach is too ambitious for you uh, because you know it entails a lot of resources and funding and only big cities like Mandaluyong can afford it. That's not uh, necessarily the case. Uh, you can start po with uh, resources that are already available to you. For example, do you have um, health workers already in your plantilla na feeling natin pwedeng mas ma-optimize yung kanilang time? Perhaps you can have them trained to be your um, CBR workers already. Um, look at your ho government hospital. There might be therapists there already. Perhaps you can uh, tap them to go to your community right, once a week for community-based help. You know, um, if, for example, um, your public school uh, has uh, SPED programs na. So maybe it's just uh, a matter of revisiting and reimagining their curriculum para mas maging smooth yung transition from preschool to high school. So um, all it takes is uh, to sit down with uh, the stakeholders, um, present on the table what uh, programs and services they already have, and uh, for the team to uh, find a way to be able to streamline all these services such that uh, maiiwasan din yung redundancy. Kasi baka meron din po palang mga servisyon na ginagawa ng City Health na binibigay ng DSWD at ng DepEd. So invest na doon na pupunta yung mga resources na, na re-redundant, eh, i-allocate na lang yung pondong naka-alot para doon sa mga yun sa ibang mga bagay na hindi pa nagagawa. So, yeah. Uh, we have a question on that note of ano, creating a team, no? Who are the persons qualified to be transition specialists? Are these only OTs? Or nga, can we train the barangay health workers, the BSWD uh, workers? Right. Well, typically, yung mga may formal training po on vocational training are vocational therapists, occupational therapists. Meron din po tayong mga... Uh, teachers na nag-undergo ng training as well as even psychologists and human resource experts. Now, um, we understand that um, we, uh, the professionals might, uh, I mean, the, the different schools and local governments um, um, wouldn't have the means to hire as many of these professionals you know, to work directly with the students in the public schools. So in that case, pwede nga employ nga po yung parang community-based model kung saan ni na-attach doon sa mga professionals na to yung mga community helpers natin like the barangay health workers for example or maybe even the parents themselves. But what's important is for these community helpers to uh, maintain constant uh, communication 
guidance and uh, regular updating of their skills uh, through the help of the trained professionals. You know? So, hindi po kasi minsan sufficient na mag-undergo ng isang seminar ngayon at isipin that uh, yun na yung kailangan hanggang uh, ma-employ yung bata at uh, siya ay masustain doon sa trabaho na yun. Kasi nag iba iba po yung needs ng bata and uh, uh, base po sa kanyang mga pangangailangan, baka mayroong ibang mga aspeto ng uh, uh, job coaching, for example, na kailangan niyang ma-avail na maaring hindi pa natin alam dahil hindi may bigay yan ng ating initial na workshop. Pero pwede niyong matutunan pag tayo ay nag-work hand in hand with uh, the consultants. So parang ano yan eh, di ba po, sa therapy, no? Uh, ang mga therapists natin very open in giving home instructions to the caregivers, di ba? Para implement yung uh, sensory techniques, language stimulation techniques, uh, in the case of PT, yung mga strengthening exercises sa bahay. So pwede sila mag-implement ng therapy kahit hindi sila therapist, di ba? So uh, so yung po ang parang similar principle na gagamitin namin natin diyan yung pagiging community based mm-hmm. at pag-empower ng families which uh, has been identified by research to be one of the indicators then of uh, uh, and predictors of successful employment. And uh, I just like to share also for the ASP Autism Works program, uh, like like teacher uh, Archie said, yeah, sometimes it's very difficult to find one professional to help us all all the time. Like in our case, we have eleven regions. We are in eleven regions, and it's very difficult to source professionals for all. So we have to be pragmatic. We have to be practical, and we have developed a uh, a network of what I call program managers. So our program managers are primarily a task with resource, uh, they, they provide the resources necessary to support the individual. If the individual is in a grocery and he is having problems with organization skills, then sometimes an OT is necessary to break down those activities for him and train him in the short term. For somebody in an office environment, like somebody with a high, a high level of uh, of intelligence, college graduate, all of that. The mentorship required is really not something you get from an OT. Sometimes it has, it can be received from a peer. Now would help him with socialization, would help him with, with uh, you know, understanding uh, social cues and all of that. Uh, also, it's important that uh, there is, uh, w- when once the individual has started working, there is a you know, th- th- we have to give him that dignity ba na somebody is not there ov- like hovering over them, checking their work. Uh, we have to let them go and let them do their work. So the, the what, what is a, what used to be transition coach, uh, transition education or job coaching will, tra- will become or will evolve into uh, a more distant type of, of mentorship. We would also like the company to step up and fill those shoes. Their supervisor will eventually have to understand how best to bring out the best in this person. And also the leadership would have to uh, give him the right training so he can up his skills. Hindi po pwedeng nandun tayo palagi. Uh, hindi rin po dating dapat isipin na nandun tayo palagi. So um, the community, uh, like Teacher Archie said, is really the best source for support. Kasi we are more flexible and we are and it's more sustainable. Kasi if you look, uh, if you look at Plantilia, if you look at hiring somebody permanently to do everything, then it becomes uh, it, it can be a strain on on uh, on anyone who is looking at scaling your efforts. So talagang importante po yung yung mga magulang, yung mga kapatid. And the good thing about tapping parents, tapping family members is hindi nyo kailangan bayaran. Sometimes their passion is such that kahit na, you know, we're gonna do this even without payment. It would be nice kung bayarin nyo kami. Pero it really doesn't matter. Tapos, uh, isa pa kong nakita ko dun sa mga kumpanya na, na kasama namin, no? Um, the ASP has started conversations about establishing family support groups within the company. So when the, the company endorses these family support groups, they become the 
parang mentors of our job placements unofficially. Kasi they always end up checking up. May mga anak silang may autism, tapos they have a special interest and special concern for their fellow co-worker na may autism. So the, our, our family support group becomes the parang built-in support system of any job placement na we make in that company. Thank you, Mona. Uh, we, this discussion has been quite interesting and I'm sure a lot of uh, uh, parents and uh, teachers have benefited from your um, for shared experiences. Uh, we do have uh, two more other questions, but um, it's already three o'clock and we're expected to go back to plenary at this time. So teacher says I was told it was 320. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. I was really. told it's three. They so to 320 because the other sessions are running late. Ah, okay. I did not get that. So may may I call on Nunu? Uh, she's a self-advocate from Thailand. Uh, she wanted to present how her own program helped her. Hi, Nuno. Thank you very much, Mrs. Sal, Madam Mona, and, and good afternoon to all of you. I almost say good morning. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so a little bit about the employment of person with autism in Thailand. Well, I have to say, I just update this morning, especially in this COVID time, this is really, really hard time for a person with autism to get, to get a job and everything. But for those who already have the job with us, with APCD, Asia Pacific Development Center on Disability, I can say that there is more than 130 person that we train and more than 75% are person with autism. And it's gonna be DY to the trainees who already graduate, they work in the business sectors, which they separate all over the society, not just the, our shop, it, they go to the five star hotels like um, Grand Hyatt Regency, they go to uh, Hilton, they go to Japaya Park Hotel, they go to various business sectors of, of Thailand. And also wish mostly we kept in our APCD project, we call it City Plus Bakery and Chocolate Cafe, which we have, right now APCD have 47 staff, but have two person with autism in the office. One of that is me, don't worry. And, and another one at our shop in, at our shop, more than 10 person out from the 30 is person with autism. And they can work very inclusively with a uh, person with other disabilities. They develop their skills. They can travel back and forth from their home to the shop and everything. So this is just would like to update. A little bit, yeah. but for yeah, that's wonderful. I love the the chocolate from uh, your uh, your coffee shop. We really enjoy that. Yeah, and you bring that to to us. Also, I can remember. <laughs> yeah, yours are yours are more bitter though. Filipinos like their chocolate sweet, so we yeah. did not uh, you know did not make it uh, too bitter. But yeah. uh, Nuno is an example of regional uh, partners who are actually doing the same things that we are. And I really appreciate the, the wide, wider concern for our community. Uh, I know that the ASEAN has actually hired interns on the autism spectrum from uh, the London School uh, Center London for, Center autism, for autism, autism Awareness. Awareness, yes. From the LS. CAA -A. and uh, of, of late we've also been communicating with other countries so for example I've been in touch with 
to, uh, Torne, si, si, uh, Torne of Specialist Torne, this company that innovated the, the hiring for SAP. And mm-hmm. they really are looking at the region, the ASEAN, the Philippines, uh, as uh, best uh, as, as uh, uh, groups that are doing great work when it comes to um, to employment. I think uh, we're leading the area uh, compared to other parts of Asia in in this sector. So thank you, Anna. Thank you, Sir Archie. <laughs> thank you, Nunu. I'm a little tea, huh? <laughs> yeah. Nunu is wearing a t-shirt from our our Otis Mall. <laughs> All right. I love those, actually. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Thank um, you very much, Madam Mona, Madam Cesar. Thank you, Nunu. Uh, Mona, may I just ask? No, um, I'm sure a lot of parents are also interested uh, to know how they can access the work from home uh, jobs that uh, are available. Do they have to go through uh, ASP? What are the requirements? Uh, can you give us an insight? Sure. So for uh, if there are any parents uh, here or teachers who have students who you feel can uh, qualify for image annotation work, uh, all you have to do is send a resume to autismfails at gmail.com. I can type, teacher says, if you can type our email address on the thread, uh, uh, and you can just send us, an, uh, that person should send us a resume. So I will repeat. The person should send us a resume, not the parent, not the teacher. It is important uh, that, that they flex their sense of self-determination. They have to want to find work. So once we receive the resume, the individual goes through uh, an interview process via Zoom. And we also uh, ask them to uh, take two um tests. Hindi naman po pass or fail yan. It's really an assessment test on uh, their occupational interest. Uh, and we kind of try to calibrate that with what we pick up from the interview. After the, the assessment uh, process, we, they would go through um, what we call training tasks. So there will be a training on the system that will be used. So they will go through uh, five training activities. After five training activities, meron pong mag-drop off. So if you did not qualify, you will get dropped off. And after you qualify for the five, you will get um, another two. Parang ito po yung final round. So by the time that you take seven uh, tests, uh, that person will already be uh, familiar with the, with the platform. Kasi technical po eh. And even after that, there will be on-the-job training. So you will still be doing training, but you will now be working with a team in New York uh, on live projects. So mangyayari, you will, uh, the kids will work on projects and then they will talk to a quality team so that they will uh, improve their work over time. Uh, Right now, all of our 11, uh, 11 uh, kids in the program are actually um, doing very well. They, they are uh, being highlighted for the quality of their work. And hindi po sila lahat taga Metro Manila. So we have Davao, we have uh, Iloilo, we have Laguna, we have Cavite, we, have, we also have from NCR, pero they're from all over the country. And it is the kind of... Uh, um, I guess opportunity that uh, it's a great I uh, know it's a great you um, equalizer ba na this opportunity exists kahit nasaan ka pwede ka mag-apply kasi online so ayun yeah is there a minimum number of hours per week that they need to uh, put in when they first come in they're only uh, given 4 hours so while they're on their pro B status uh, some of them uh are actually able to transition to full-time work immediately while some prefer part-time work. Uh, this is where also the flexibility of the employer was very important because they said, you know, whatever works for them. So uh, right now, out of the 11, two are still on part-time work. 
because that is their preference. They don't want to go full time. Thank you. I think uh, that will um, benefit a lot of uh, our kids. I do hope so. Because like I mentioned earlier, we need to fill <laughs> we need to fill eighty nine more positions. Wow! Uh, so we're looking at we're we're looking at uh, more uh, more employees uh, coming in. <coughs> Nakatuwa kasi parang the future looks so bright now for our adults. Uh, something that was not, that we didn't even dream of during our time in the 80s. <laughs> and, and honestly po, itong project natin with Divergent, we actually started this, having this conversation before the pandemic. So that is why in AS, before the, before the pandemic, we bought furniture. Meron po kaming furniture sa office para sa mga divergent team namin na hindi na po namin nagamit dahil it became work from home. So, um, it, it, it is something I feel that is, uh, well, it, it's heaven sent really. It was an answer to our prayers. Uh, pero there's also this, ano, there's also this level of commitment and this is the same for whether you are in asp or whether you are a high school teacher looking at transition education for your kids or uh, uh, a therapist now sometimes po, you have to go beyond your ano eh, your comfort level it is only when you kind of try to innovate and kind of uh, look at something that has not been done uh, para po maka, makarami tayo, maka, makahanap tayo ng mga bagong solusyon sa mga lumang problema. Tingnan niyo si Teacher Archie, dati wala namang ganyan eh. Dahil kay Teacher Archie, nagkaroon tuloy ng, ng uh, mas maraming mga bata na nakakapag-transition education. Alright, thank you Teacher Archie, thank you Ma'am Mona. <laughs>